So in this problem, we are given that x raised to the power of x times y raised to the power of y times z raised to the power of z is given by a constant c. And we have z as a function of f, x, and y. And we need to show that the second partial derivative of z with respect to y and x is given by negative 1 over x times log of e times x whenever x equals to y equals to z. So let's begin. So here we are given that x raised to the power of x times y raised to the power of y times z raised to the power of z. So this value is equals to c. So we'll take, we'll take the logarithm, the natural logarithm on both sides to get x raised to the power of x times y raised to the power of y times z raised to the power of z equals to log of c. Now we can break down the logarithm on the left hand side using a property of logarithm. So if we have log of a multiplied to b, this will be equals to log of a plus log of b, which gives us log of x raised to the power of x plus log of y raised to the power of y plus log of c raised to the power of z equals to log of c. We can also simplify the three logarithms on the left hand side using another preferred property of logarithm, which is log of x raised to the power of x. So this will be equals to x times log of x. Similarly, log of y raised to the power of y will be y times log of y and log of z raised to the power of z will be z times log of z. So this is a property of logarithm. So we get x natural log of x plus y times natural log of y plus z times natural log of z. So this will be equals to log of z. So let's label this as equation number one and we'll be using it now. So for the first step will be, we'll take the partial derivative on both sides with respect to x. So we'll take partial derivative with respect to x of each of the terms. We have x log x plus partial with respect to x of y log y plus partial with respect to x of z log z equals to partial with respect to x of log of c. So we'll apply the product rule to the first partial derivative. This gives us partial of x with respect to x multiplied to log of x plus x times partial with respect to x of log of x plus now partial of y with respect to log of y, this will be zero because y will be treated as a constant whenever we are taking its partial derivative with respect to x. So this is zero. Plus, we'll have to use the product rule here. Your z cannot be treated as a constant because in our problem, we are clearly mentioned here that z is a function of x and y. So that means it has got an x dependence. Now we will use the product rule to get partial of z with respect to x multiplied to log of z plus z times partial of partial with respect to x of log of z so this will be equals to now log of z is a constant so its derivative will be zero so partial of x with respect to x so that's simply one so we have log of x plus x times pa partial of log of x with uh, respect to x will be one over x plus partial of z with respect to x multiplied to a log of z plus so we have z times now partial of z with respect to x will be 1 over z multiplied to partial of z with respect to x so here we have used the chain rule so this will be equals to 0 for further simplification gives us log of x plus 1 plus partial of z with respect to x times log of z plus partial of z with respect to x equals to 0. So we can take partial of z with respect to x as the common factor from the third and the fourth term. So this will give us log of z plus 1 equals to negative of log of x plus 1. That means we have partial of z with respect to x given by negative of log of x plus 1 divided by log of z plus 1. So let's label this as number 2. Now what we'll do, we'll again consider equation number 1. So in equation number 1, we had obtained that x times log of x plus y times log of y plus z times log of z equals to log of z. So this was what we obtained equation number 1. 
Now we'll take the partial derivative of each of the terms with respect to y. So partial with respect to y of x log x plus partial with respect to y of y log y plus partial with respect to y of z log z which will be equals to partial of a constant will be zero. Now the first partial derivative is also going to be zero because now x will be treated as a constant with respect to y. So we'll come to the second term. So the partial derivative is going to give us log of y plus 1 and taking the partial derivative of z log z with respect to y is going to give us partial of z with respect to y. We have log of z plus 1 equals to 0. Solving for partial z with respect to y that will be equals to negative of log of y plus 1 divided by log of z plus 1. So we'll consider this as equation number 3. So we have partial of z and partial of x obtained. We will use this. Now coming to a question, we have to show that the second partial derivative of z with respect to y followed by x as given by this particular expression. So let's do that. That means we have to find out the second partial derivative of z with respect to y then followed by x. So this actually loosely translates to it's partial of z with respect to y then we will take the partial with respect to x. So we have already obtained the value of partial of z with respect to y just now. So let's replace it here. So we have partial with respect to x of negative of log of y plus 1 divided by log of z plus 1. So we'll take the partial derivative here. So here log of y plus 1, this is a constant because y is independent of, uh, y is not dependent on x, this is going to be treated as a constant. So we can pull it out. So we have negative of log of y plus 1 multiply to partial with respect to x. So we will take log of z plus 1 to the numerator. You get log of z plus 1 raised to the power of negative 1. So we've written in this particular format so that we can easily apply the power rule. So we have negative of log of y plus 1, applying the power rule to get negative 1 times log of z plus 1 raised to the power of negative 1 minus 1 times partial with respect to x. So we'll also have to take the partial derivative of the inner expression by using the chain rule. So we have log of z plus 1. So that means we, as we are going to get neg so this negative 1 and negative will become positive to give us log of y plus 1. And we'll take this expression to the denominator. We'll have division by log of c plus 1 whole squared times. So let's take log, the partial of log of z with respect to x. Because partial of 1 with respect to x will be 0. So this means we have log of y plus 1 divided by log of z plus 1 whole squared. Multiplied derivative of the logarithmic function is 1 over z. Multiplied to partial of z with respect to x. Right. We have also obtained the value of partial of z with respect to x, which is, well, let me write it down, log of y plus 1 divided by z times log of z plus 1 whole squared. So we have negative of log of x plus 1 divided by log of z plus 1. Right. Now we can combine them to get a negative of log of y plus 1 times log of x plus 1 divided by z multiplied to log of z plus 1 whole raised to the power of 3. So this is the value, second partial derivative of z with respect to y followed by x. Now we are given in our following problem that x equals to y equals to z. x equals to y is equals to z. So that means our expression on the right hand side will become negative of log of x plus 1 whole squared divided by x times log of x plus 1 raised to the power of 3, which is simply negative 1 over x multiplied to log of x plus 1. Now we know that log of e, so that value is equals to 1, natural log of e is 1, so in place of 1 we can have negative 1 divided by x times natural log of x plus log of e. 
this will be equals to negative 1 divided by x we can use the property of logarithm to combine these two to get log of e times x and this is the value of second partial derivative of z with respect to y followed by x so this is what we were asked to prove